afternoon to everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm here, uh, Nicole, with uh, Edit Manasse, co-director and co-founder of Panteray Approach. Um, I see many, many practitioners here, so you all uh, know us already, but it's always nice to introduce um, to those who, who are new or joining us out of curiosity. And today we have a very um, special topic, uh, one that Bedded is, um, has a lot of experience with and is a topic of a lot of interest, and that is working with trauma in mm. the Pantsery approach. So Bedded, I would hand it over to you directly. Um, it is a strong, a very big topic, um, and like we were saying earlier, something we can probably talk about for many, many, many sessions um, so if you'd like to just open up and describe a little how you would define trauma and, and where, where to place it within the context of Pantoray. Hmm. So first of all, welcome and thank you very much for this introduction. And as Nicole said, it's a huge topic. Um, it's something that we cannot just cover in half an hour, but usually in my introductory meetings when people ask me, about the studies, about what does it mean to be a Pantoray practitioner, uh, sometimes in these one and a half hours meetings that I'm leading, somebody would ask me, and what about trauma? And usually I have maybe two minutes to say something about it, and I thought that maybe today we can really give it a bit more time and realize what does it actually mean, trauma, for us, and how we can um, relate to it um, in or how are we relating to it in sessions, in the Pantura approach studies, um, and what you can expect in case you are really coming to study with us and give sessions to your clients. Um, maybe I would just say before I'm even going into the definition of trauma, trauma is something that no matter which profession you do <laughs> that includes people, Trauma is there. We cannot ignore it. We cannot wait until we will be just ready. We cannot say that um, I don't have the time for it. Trauma is there for most of our clients, for most of the people. Um, I don't know if I know anyone that cannot relate to some kind of traumatic events in their life that impacted them to this day. Um, in sessions with our clients, traumas um, appear, <laughs> appear sometimes by the client tells us, look, that's what happened to me when I was five, when I was 10, when I was born. Maybe trauma didn't happen to me, but to all of my family. Uh, the topic of trauma can come uh, through a conversation that our clients would really uh, say this is what happened and many of our clients already did therapy or are doing right now therapy and they can even share a lot about how this trauma impacted them what does it mean in their life uh, what would they like differently how does it impact their body their emotion their behavior uh, the trust, so many different kind of uh, elements of life. And we have to relate to that. So I, I started by saying some of our clients would simply come and say, that's what happened. They know already. They have the knowledge and they, they even have the knowledge of what was the impact of that. Some clients would not be able to say anything but we would recognize it in the way the body behave, in the way the whole system, the energy uh, act in certain moments. And we might not even share with them anything about the definition of trauma. We might not talk about it at all, but we have to give it space in the room. We have to remember that trauma makes, um, um, yeah, impact people, impact society. And I think it's our entire responsibility as people, as practitioners, and as society to educate ourselves about the impact of trauma, to understand more about it, and to know how to relate to that. So you, you gave me just the freedom to introduce the topic myself. Absolutely. <laughs> and, that's, <laughs> and that's what I would say. Uh, you ask about the definition of trauma. So let me just, maybe that's always a good starting point when we are talking about trauma. Um, 
I like to use GABA meta um, definition. I, if you don't know him, it's definitely a person to follow and to uh, read what he's saying and to, and to hear him. Uh, he related in one of, I think it was one of his books or maybe a podcast that I heard, to trauma as something that happens inside of us, not as the event itself. Um, I liked that definition and it resonated a lot with me um, for many different reasons. Maybe the most important one is that I find it a very optimistic um, definition. If it's something that happens inside of us, it means that we also can do quite a lot about it. We can change how we relate to it. We can change how we relate to our own life. We can change how we can relate to society and maybe even to whatever caused the traumas in our life. We have the ability to create, if we want to call it self-healing, we can say self-healing, although this for me always sounds as if something is wrong <laughs> and we need to heal from that. Um, but it, it gives us back the power and the ability to do something about it in our life. So. That's one of the reasons I like very much his definition. And the other part that I really can resonate with that, uh, you know, different people can go through a um, traumatic event. It wouldn't impact everyone at the same, in the same way. It's an individual, it's a subjective experience. It's something that we can only relate to the person who speaks to us. Um, there is no one thing that that everyone would um, would you know. There is not one impact for everyone uh, when we are relating to the topic of trauma, which ties in so beautifully with with the whole Pantare approach and and viewing each individual and their their uniqueness and discovering who they are, what their story is, what's where they're coming from, which is so different to the next person. Um, and exactly. while we have shared experiences, shared, um, shared life events, how, how they manifest, how we interpret them, how we live with them, how we work with them is, is very unique. And that touches on so nicely of the Pantare work um, in identifying that and allowing clients to identify that within themselves. Exactly, exactly. I'm... You know, maybe it's important to say from the beginning, the Pantara approach, if anyone of you is not a practitioner or you would listen to it later in the YouTube and you just want to know something about the Pantara approach, the entire approach is based on the individuality of the person, on what is unique about each one of us. Uh, our own story, our own qualities, our own abilities, uh, who we are and this also includes the way I would relate to trauma. It's not only that each person, the, the, the trauma impacted us in different way. Uh, what I'm after when I'm meeting my clients is always who they are. In, in a way, of course, I listen to the story. Of course, the story has to get the space. We need to listen to each other. We need to... Um, allow a safe space for people to share and to really find a way to express and and ex expose what happened and and what do they feel about it and what's going on still in their life today but at the same time when I listen to my clients tells me about their story their trauma their the, yeah, whatever journey they 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 went through all of their life, and all of the time, continuing to listen to what does it actually says about the person? What do I hear? Um, what what are the strengths and qualities uh, of of the person? And I'm not. I, I hope that I managed to say that in a clear enough way. I'm not focused, I don't focus on the story. I hear the story, I give it space and it's an important space. I give the pain and the fear and the frustration and the anger and the, the, the helplessness and, 
and all of those emotions, I'll give it as much space as I can because it needs it. We need to have that space. But at the same time, what I am looking at, what I'm searching, what I want to explore with my client is who are you? How can I use your own strengths? How can you use your own strengths in order to deal with whatever happened? And even more importantly, in order to live your life today as you wish to live your life today. So that's and when we are, yeah, please. Yeah, so looking at the story and, and um, as, as, or at the event, at the experience, in order to get to know the person better, in a sense, in order for them to also get to know them better so that they can harness their whatever they're going through to find what, what makes them uh, unique, what enables them to survive and to flourish even. I would say absolutely to flourish. And, you know, when we talk about trauma and especially when we start to hear stories, which, by the way, today I'm not going to share any story of clients. So I'm just trying to make the lights differently. Maybe it will be better. Um, I will not share with you stories of my clients today um, for many reasons. Um, but one of them is that really there, is, there are so many <laughs> There are so many. I'm just thinking about the last week I had with clients. Uh, I heard so many stories that are, yeah, um, so painful. Um, but I think, yes, we, if, we are, if we are taking for one moment the, the term trauma and we put it aside and we relate for any kind of challenge and difficult situations in our life, we can all, I think, uh, agree that those challenging situations also brought something from us that we wouldn't meet otherwise. Uh, and when I meet my clients that are dealing with things like traumas in their life, of course, I would wish no traumas if we could definitely from children and from childhood, but also later, if I could wish something from this to this universe, there is, there is any God that I can say, please. Uh, I think, yes, my, my prayer would go absolutely to less abuse, less trauma, let's, let's, let, let, that society would give less pain, less suffering to each other. Uh, it's, it's really sad to hear how much of the suffering we all carry um, is a suffering that we give to each other. When I'm saying we, I mean people, human beings give to each other uh, suffering uh, from a very young age. So if we could change that, we would all do that. Uh, or I would definitely do everything I can for that. But when I meet my clients, it's already after the event. I cannot change the past. They cannot change their history. You can only relate to what happened and see exactly like you are saying, uh, how this can connect the person even more to themselves. How can they learn even more about who they are? And I would say not even what they did in the time of the trauma, because like you said, we all try to survive, <laughs> to survive any trauma in our life. That's what we are doing. When it happens, people, you know, the, the, the three um, famous freeze fright of, of right, like the, we, are, we are doing something just to deal with what is going on right now. But I meet my clients many years later, sometimes 40 years later, 50 years later, or even 10, it's after the event. And even if it's just a few years later, and there we want to look at what was the impact on your life from that event, what did you do inside yourself and how we can bring, no, I cannot say bring back, I would say really notice that in all of this process, all of this time, you also learned a lot about yourself. You have your empath empathy and your kindness and your uh, sensitivity and so many other elements of your life that I don't want to say are a result of of what happened, because that's, of course, not the result. But it is something that this uh, traumatic event 
brought even stronger to the light. It's like the, the light is stronger in the background of the darkness. Uh, we see it, uh, it shines uh, stronger. It's, it goes all to, to the horizon. We, we see it from a way more far away. If everything is light, if everything is nice, um, yeah, we are not really noticing all of those uh, parts of the person. So yeah, I am looking for the, with my clients, I'm looking, what does it actually mean about you? What can we see about who you are and how you can use that actually to also deal with the impact of the trauma of the story, of the events, the painful events that happen in your life. And fr from that, if we if we look a little about how that um, looks in a in a Pantare session, um, we can connect. Um, maybe you can connect that a little to how you teach about it in in the classes, connecting the body, the physicality, a touch uh, with this topic. So again, for the ones of you that don't know what the Pantare approach is, uh, it is a combination with touch, or at least a session of the Pantare approach uh, happens with a combination of touch and verbal communication. Now, touch uh, is a big thing. <laughs> it's a big term. Uh, maybe you even looked at the uh, life with Claudia that she did not long time ago with you, Nicole, about touch, about the, the language of touch and why do we use that uh, in our sessions. But to, to say something about that touch for us as Pantare practitioners, um, is the mean to create an experience, is to move from the mind uh, domain to the domain of an experience, to a place that we feel, that we connect, uh, that we feel ourself, uh, that we feel our life, that we feel our visions, our wanting, uh, that we feel other people. And touch from the one hand can also um, uh, be the, the, the maybe even can connect to some people with their trauma so of course we need to look at that also and to find how do we want to touch in a way that our clients would feel safe maybe first most important that they would feel safe in their own body in the room with the practitioner um, in telling their stories, whether they tell it with words or just by the way they are. Um, but touch is also a, a place that we can really connect the person to themselves. Uh, there is something that I'm sure that all of, I, I want to hope that everyone knows the impact of a loving hands um, on our body uh, that doesn't ask us to do anything that is not uh, creating any pressure, um, that is just there to say, I'm here, and I want through my own being here, through my own present with you, I want you also to feel your own, your present. I want you to feel your own um, being, energy, and body. And a lot of the time, this is what touch is doing. It allows people to connect. Of course, it also, if you know, if if because of what happened, I found myself completely squeezing my shoulders, touch would also remind my body that whatever happened, happened, and it's time to open up, and it's time to trust, and it's time to let go, and I can allow all of this energy to flow in my body and in my life in order for me to do with that whatever I want. Um, we often believe as if the energy that has been accumulated from whatever happened can only be, be released in relation to that trauma, but it's not like that. Uh, I could collect, collect a lot of energy, stack energy in, let's say, my shoulders and neck because of whatever happened in my life. As soon as we free that energy, we let it flow in the body. And I hope that that makes sense for the ones of you that maybe never got any um, bodywork uh, session. And if you didn't, and this sounds something that triggers you or interesting for you, yeah, go ahead and get a session. But when we free that energy, we actually let the client choose where to use that energy. 
Uh, do they want to use it for their relationship, for their studies, for their professional life? Uh, it's just their energy. And um, it's a beautiful uh, event <laughs> to witness in sessions how that kind of energy is finding its own way <laughs> to free itself. Um, I believe that all the time, or, or as, as human beings, we all the time want to get healthier. <laughs> we, want to, we want to feel with more energy. We just don't know always how to do that. And with the help of a practitioner, the clients can find ways to connect back to that kind of, um, yeah, their own being and their own strengths, I would like to say. And it's maybe in the same sentence, even though it's already a very long sentence. I also want to say when I'm saying to connect to the strengths and being, I'm not only talking about positive, lovely things. We are here talking about trauma. A lot of the time people have to connect to their pain, to their heart, to a feeling of helplessness, a feeling of frustration, a feeling that loneliness, uh, not nice feelings, not kind feelings, but when we manage to own those, those feelings, when we manage to feel that I can feel so lonely, but still to breathe, I can feel that I didn't know where to go, but I still can expand. I don't need to shrink myself. I can allow my experience to, to grow. There is a growing up sensation that is happening on those moments. The sensation that I can deal with, with hard stuff. I can go through a, a crisis and I can go out of that crisis. And it's often very um, <laughs> beautiful, maybe I would I, I have to say, to realize how much when you talk to people who went through not easy traumas and not easy stories, and when you ask them about life, they are often bringing very optimistic statements, even if they are not optimistic people. They have something about, I know who I am. I want to bring that to the light. Uh, I know that I would manage. Uh, life is bigger than this kind of event. Um, it's a very beautiful, um, yes, light. It's a very beautiful sensation. And I feel as if to connect people into that force, um, even if it comes with tears and it comes with um, all of those kind of hard, difficult emotions, it's a beautiful, beautiful process of transformation. That is that is very very beautifully said and and sounds like like um, like a lot within within the studies and I think there. Um, I think you said at the beginning also that that um, it's not necessarily just trauma, but it's it's the approach that the, that Pantare uses when when working with any person, um, client, of of identifying these qualities of working in this in this form, um, no matter the story, no matter the experiences, um, no matter when they happened. Exactly. And that, that definitely um, falls into into the course of, of the practitioner studies. And then, of course, I know you developed that very beautifully in the advanced studies for certified practitioners. Uh, yeah. So maybe you want to mention there the transition from practitioner studies and certified um, courses. Like I would just say, if any of the people who listen to us uh, have knowledge about trauma, of course, just to have it as one topic, in the, the, you know, the, the training program is good. <laughs> it's important, but it's not enough. So the, the practitioners that find themselves wanting to develop more uh, would just have way more advanced studies that would also touch the topic of trauma, where we would only 
dive into that topic. And in the studies itself, like we are teaching the six modules, each one of five days in order to get the certificate of the Pantore practitioner. In those kind of days, we will touch the topic of trauma. But as you, you said, Nicole, like we would touch generally, how do we relate to the past of our clients? So their history, all of their history, Everything that happened until today is part of what we are today. I also want to remind us that even in times of trauma, way more things are happening at that time. Uh, even if at home somebody feels that the, the life is the nightmare, they still go out there and suddenly they feel they, they meet nature or they have the dog or they have the, the beautiful fall and the leaves that are right now changing their colors, there is way more than only the trauma. So when we are talking about history in the training program, we talk about how can we use everything that happened to this moment, how we can include that in our client's life and the history of our lives, the history of our family, maybe of our country, maybe of gender. There is so much of history here. Um, that we can lean on and we can use if we would know how to do that. And of course, relating to the present moment and to the future. And trauma is just a part of it. And uh, in the studies, we give it time, but only as much as we can in those kind of uh, modules. And uh, later, practitioners that want to know more, they would have plenty of opportunities. And if you are out there listening to me and you are one of our practitioners and um, yeah I would definitely recommend come and study more and dive into this topic and uh, let's do something from that direction of really being a part of ending ending in, in whatever ways we can the circles of trauma because this is not um it's not just the event again. It's what happens in us. And as it's still there and it's still alive, it also creates um, ripples effects. Like it's, it's, it's continue to impact life. And I think that when the transformation process happens and people find their own strengths back, uh, it's still the impact also does the same. People get more optimistic knowledge. They know that, they can change the noise, they know that they can really bring and transform their life um, toward whatever destination. I don't want to say whatever destination or desire wish, but whatever is possible, possible for them. And, uh, and first of all, really with a connection to themselves, to their heart, to their own wishes and their own values in life. Thank you. So it was that effect from, from the individual into their surroundings, into the effect that each transformation that we go through doesn't only impact ourselves, but impacts everyone um, and everything around us, how we relate to, to the wider world and, and um, the people in our, in our surroundings. Exactly. And I think that's one of the very important principles of the Pantore approach in, again, whether we relate to trauma or to any other topic. And I have a few more questions, but I almost think um, we should, I should invite you for another, another live about this topic. Um, yeah, to we look at half an hour. Aspects ah. of it because <laughs> half an hour is up. <laughs> so quick. There are always questions um, to continue. So it's a bit of a question for you if you'd like to still uh, answer those now, or if we... I am always interested to talk about this topic. I, for many years, uh, deal with that and look at that and work with so many clients uh, that dealt with trauma. But I think we said half an hour, let's keep it half an hour. And we will just have another meeting and continue our, our conversation. Let's do that. And if anyone um, out there is interested in, in the Pantare studies um, that it is giving in and intro meeting that is online um, on Tuesday coming up at 5 p.m. in Berlin. And we have a very special event, um, our first one in our new Panzerei Approach School in, in Berlin, in Kreuzberg. 
um, which is all about the Panthera approach with Merav, who's an incredible practitioner and, and teacher. And that's coming up next week, Friday. So definitely an opportunity to get to know everyone, to, to meet practitioners, to meet um, people interested and, and to meet some of the teachers. Um, so everybody is welcome. You can just go onto our website um, on Panthera approach and uh, register and I'm sure that will be an amazing event. I'm very sad to miss that. I'm here in Portugal, but <laughs> hope there will there will be definitely uh, more in the future. So we'll have those open to the general public as well. Or and maybe of course, one in our time in Portugal. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Greece, Portugal, things are moving. Um, and definitely, there's more on our workshops page. Um, there you can find everything happening every month, all the activities that everyone's welcome to. So that brings us to the end of today. It was, as always, an absolute pleasure. Thank you, uh, Vered. Mm. And uh, we'll meet again in person and on online mm. very soon. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Nicole and everyone. Thank you. I can see what you are writing and it's lovely to read once in a while <laughs> some kind of uh, hearing you and seeing you. So thank you very much for that. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you.